In this week's episode of the Core Challenge, USBC Gold Coach and Equipment Expert Lou Marquez drills three brand new bowling balls for our Core subscribers, West Indiana, and we watch Lou walk them through his very detailed fitting process. That's coming up next on the Core Challenge. Hey bowling super fans, Emil Williams Jr. back with you from the ITRC and by now you've gotten a chance to learn more about West Indiana, our two core subscribers who want a chance to train at this facility simply by subscribing to the core. In our previous episode, Team USA head coach Rod Ross walked them through a very intense bowling boot camp Team USA style. Now it's time for some new equipment. Lou Marquez, USBC gold coach and equipment expert is ready, willing, and able to punch up a couple of new rocks for our participants and maybe even give them a new fit. One of the first things we're going to start off with is just kind of getting your normal release, you know, like you would be at your normal bowling center, nothing different, no change of hand position. I don't want you rolling a spare shot type of release, but just normal, you know, executed shot. So use your chamois, remove all the oil. Let's take one more shot. How'd that one feel? I felt more. Looked good. Kept yeah. it online. That was yeah. really nice. Okay, so let me grab this ball. And we're gonna then mark it up, trace it, measure where your axis tilt is, positive axis point, all that good stuff. Roll that shot for me again, normal release. We're gonna see how steady that piece of tape is. And if we need to make any adjustments, we will. I'm gonna make a little tweak to that to get it perfect. Sometimes we have to take this process several times because as a bowler gets more comfortable and confident about a shot, their release may change. And I think that was something that you mentioned in the yes. interview process that you were I do. wanting to work on your release a little bit more. Okay, let's try it again one more time. That was a really good shot. That feel that you had right there, that was perfect. Yeah. All right, gotta do one final measurement. I'm gonna get your positive axis coordinates. We've got your axis of tilt, which is roughly about 15 degrees. And then we've got your positive axis point. So you're five and a half inches horizontally over from the center of your grip and seven eighths vertically. Go ahead and take a shot for us. You know, just give us your best attempt at your first release. Felt good? Yeah. All right. So I'll get it marked up. Okay, so we marked that spot for you, Wes, and this is just an approximation right now. We're trying to get it identified as perfect, but okay. we're going to see how close I am here. Looks pretty stable. Okay, so we're marking the center point of your grip, and now we're going to identify the midline and then get to the actual positive axis point. It's kind of a lot of bull, bull and jargon for identifying <laughs> where the coordinates are, that kind of thing, so. I didn't do well in geometry in school. <laughs> okay, so we've got your positive axis point as being three inches and three and five eighths inches horizontally and 11 sixteenths inches vertically. Pitches the fingers, mm -hmm. 
are, for someone who's very flexible, mm -hmm. but yet your fingers are a little bit more stiffer than normal. Okay. All right? Now, your flexibility in your thumb mm -hmm. is extremely flexible, Okay. which we need to get you to hold on to the ball. Don't try to cheat it and, and maybe just use the tip or try and jam your finger in. As you're jamming your fingers into the ball, you're also removing some of the blood flow that naturally you, you know, your skin needs. I think the idea of when you went using forward pitch mm -hmm. was the right idea. Okay. But because of the pitches in the fingers, they mm -hmm. didn't correlate. Okay. It didn't match up to what your hand was saying. Mm -hmm. So my advice is that we return back to using a little bit more forward pitch okay. to get you to naturally hold on, that's mm -hmm. what your hand wants. Okay. And then using a little bit more reverse pitch in the fingers okay. to accommodate the stiffness that you have in the joints. I don't recommend having you jam your fingers in there, yes. but you currently do that. Is that something that you would wish to change, or do you want to continue to utilize that system that you have? No, I'd rather be relaxed, pretty much. Okay. The proportions to a relationship between fingers and thumb are going to be more conducive to what your hand wants okay. versus what someone's giving you. The middle finger is slightly longer than what we would recommend. So maybe on this new piece of equipment, if you don't mind, we oh, can yeah. try that, you know, calculated into your fit and maybe it makes your release a little bit more consistent. And your span was like rock solid, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to make any adjustments in the length, okay. but just more in pitch. So we're gonna fit you up for an oval thumb and hopefully accommodate that callusing that you have on the sides. We're not that far off. But, okay. You know, just tweaking here and there, right. it's gonna add a couple extra pins to our game, okay. all right? I'm gonna take all the calculations uh, that I have here and put them into the new one and then design the ball for you. Now as bowlers, we all know how tough it is to consider someone else drilling our equipment, let alone changing our fits. But will Wes and Deanna adhere to Lou's recommendation? With Wes, his span was very, very good. It was spot on. His range of flexibility didn't necessarily match up to what the pitches in his current ball was at. We kind of relaxed the fingers because of the stiffness in the two fingers. We adjusted the pitch on his thumb because he originally had a zero pitch. We moved him into a little bit more forward because he was tending to squeeze a little bit more, so we wanted to get the right grip pressure set comfortable for him, and he's good to go from there. But Deanna, she was actually pretty good. The only thing we noticed was that she had two issues that she was doing. She tapes up on her fingers, and then she was using a very tight insert to begin with. So we made changes in the grip size, also relaxed the fingers based on her stiffness and uh, flexibility, and I actually dropped her middle finger span just a touch. Her ring finger was spot on. The middle finger was a little bit on the long side, just by a fraction. We dropped it back. It got her into a little bit better fit, more comfortable. And then we made some alterations again with her oval angle, not the pitch on her thumb though, but she was good to go after that. As far as layouts, we looked at their rotation, we looked at their revolutions, their tilt, and then we calculated a certain layouts that works best for their style of bowling. All right, Wes, we've got three unique bowling balls here for you. Programmed a layout here that is similar in all three balls, but the differences between these balls are the cover stock strengths. Typically when you're bowling on a fresh condition uh, or a very oily condition, you're gonna need a very aggressive type of cover stock. So we've got the shorter lock here for you. This ball has a very aggressive dynamic cover stock, um, soaks up a lot of oil, starts hooking in a lot of volume as well as some good considerable length. If that pattern starts to deteriorate over time from being really consistent in that spot, we can then go to a uh, hybrid reactive. Very unique core structure that gives us a nice smooth motion on the back end. Um, not very whippy or jumpy on the back. And this one is for when the lanes are really starting to get scorched. Maybe the front part of the lane is starting to dry up and you have that feeling where you've got to move in. Well, this old ball will allow you to play that same similar area. All right? All right. Okay, let's get bowling. Okay, let's see. New equipment? Check. New fit? Check. 
Uh, there's nothing else left to do but practice. And we are talking about practice. So, first time, you, especially when there's a new fit, you really want to make sure you just half speed, relax your hand, get it off your hand. So the pitches feel a little different for you? Yeah. How does it feel in your hand when you're rolling? It feels good. Feels like it's coming off. Any pressure coming off at all? No, just no. Comes from just I think there were some definitely some things that changed today uh, that are going to be really helpful and probably make a big difference in my game. Oh, nice. Oh, wow, it feels really good. Mentally, your your body's still trying to tell you no, it's not right because you're so used to one way. With my new position at the line, I think I need to go back to working on uh, balance. So remember that last shot when you said, you know, get a little lower, just kind of keep rolling it in? Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I want you to really do. Okay. Just so you're not having to feel like you have to squeeze and getting it out there. Good shot. Really good shot. I did it. With the new equipment, I'm feeling a little more confident. Really trying to stay out of my head, make small adjustments, uh, and trust the ball to do what it's going to do. Uh, you know, I should do okay. In next week's finale, West Indiana put all of their training to the test when they compete in a three game total pinfall match for the Core Challenge Trophy. Who's your pick to win? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bull TV.